All right, time for uh, part two of building your own distro. So before we dive in, just a few little quick things I want to cover before we get into it. Uh, the source code for this now will be available in a public repo. So you will be able to go into here. It's going to have some basic um, branches, part one, two, maybe three, four, etc. Uh, don't worry about the readme, it's just a copy of the code. So this is part two with the make file, everything that will be available. These six steps is what you would use to reproduce what we're going to do today. Um, but we'll go through it. So, and my main advice is always, or should always be, uh, make sure you understand the script before you run it. Yes, you can trust code from you know famous repos, etc. But you can still damage your system by doing something without not understanding it, like simply a, a wrong directory. So, bye bye to that one. Uh, the repo's there if you want it. Also, quickly, just while this one's open, I've been thinking about what I want to do with Angry OS slash me building a, a gaming distro for the sake of it. So I'm actually going to slightly aim it towards just being a customizable script, hopefully in the end, uh, for people to build their own Debian uh, gaming distro. Anyway, that will come in time. Um, but you know, websites there. Blah. So, what are we going to do today? Uh, first thing is we're pretty much going to dive in and start with a make file and continue from where we were before, obviously. So, um, previously we had a standard, it was in, by the way, just an opt uh, BYOD folder, uh, but now we're gonna change the structure a little bit. So, we're not gonna use Git or anything, we just want to clean up, and then we're gonna make a make file. Uh, the reason we're gonna do the make file, purely to speed up the process overall on uh, building it and just to make it easier um, at the end day uh, I make file you know it's a good habit anyway we want to remove our auto and our config so we've got our empty folder I've probably still got like you know thin ones etc and we're gonna use an IDE today uh, PHP storm just because I know it not that it will matter now, in our build folder, which is what we're changing today as well, so we're not working in just the one folder, we've got a source and an output folder. Uh, I've already got my cache folder. So I've got, you know, two gig just of random cache I've been building. It's purely left over to speed it up. Yours will generate that, so if I was to delete it, you know, it will just rebuild it. Now, first thing is our make file. I am going to paste this in and then explain it. Uh, where to start? Variables. Basically, we're going to grab the user ID that runs the script, and that user ID will get checked in this function here to make sure that they're a user of zero. If they're not, we will exit basically in the sense that it's a pseudo. So if we do make. Uh, yep, install checks it, so you'll get an error. Uh, I'll explain a bit of the script, but let's just confirm. So we do a sudo make install, it'll go and install the dependencies. Uh, now we have our two directories, which you can see here. We have our build directory, which is our output, and our source directory, which is our parts slash our repo. Uh, a log file for when we're building uh, with the LB build, we just log it to a log for the sake of readability and being able to go back over it without worrying about the console, plus it's handy to search. The common options for the KVM, or the virtual machine, and that's pretty much the top section. The rest of it are just the individual sections for the make file. So let's run through what happens when you run a sudo make, which we won't do at the moment. That will check that the sudo is available, it will perform a clean, which will go through all of these. And then it will do a sync config and a build ISO. 
So the clean is pretty straightforward. It's similar to a uh, bash script. We're gonna empty the directories. So this one here, effectively back just to where the cache is. So we'll delete everything to the point it's empty. In our sync config, we will basically copy over our auto and config folder into this folder here before we run the build. Uh, now it does run the LB config in the auto, so it sets that folder up just for us, and then we sync over our changes on top of that. So we have our standard build changes and that's pretty much all that will do so we'll just clean it up we'll copy our file system overlay if you want to call it whatever um, our overlay onto it and then we'll perform the build now if you want to test it straight afterwards for example you would just go and do that and that will perform the test in the same step so the all is executed when you don't have a instruction uh, for the sake of it there's a setup here so if we run sudo make setup, which I haven't actually got the sudo one, probably for a good reason, because I don't need it. You, depending on your permissions and folders, my opt folder allows my user to create in it. So that will go through and uh, what do you call it? Create it. What this is doing is making sure our directory exists, which is our build do, which it will, it just won't error out because of the minus p. And then we're running in the source directory, a the lb config. Now you're only going to run these once, effectively. So you could just delete that for now, but we won't. And then you pretty much go through, run these three, and these are the extras. Uh, for the sake of it, I did it make help. You know, obviously runs out. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. Uh, but the reason I choose the make file also is because you've got the order complete. Um, using some like Python or standard bash scripts, it's not as simple as to do that. Now, before we start, let's just say for the sake of it, we want to make our hard drive. We now have a 32 gig hard drive image there ready for when we need to launch. Alright, before anything else, let's start with some package modification as we did earlier. Now our package list isn't available from before. So what we're going to do is bring that in like we did originally. And we'll build once and then we'll start making our changes just to show that this is still working. Now I'm taking the source code from our repos, uh, sorry, from the repo that I'm supplying, so a lot of that will be in here. But for now we're just going to do an example one, uh, so we call that distro base dot from memory. And our original one was task kd, oh sorry, it was task gnome desktop. Now that would give us our whole um, installation of a GNOME desktop but the problem is it was junked up with everything so we're gonna get around that today we'll start with doing a basic KDE build just so you can see that working now that's pretty much all we're gonna need to do there to test if I'm not mistaken we're gonna run a make as usual feel free to skip forward this will probably take Five-ish minutes, I guess. Now, while we are waiting, I can probably bring in another terminal and just show you something that you can use for your package checking. Because what we're going to be doing is getting rid of the recommends. So, let's say we want to check what's in that package. Uh, we do our depends, task, kdd, desktop, and we can see that these are the ones we want to keep, uh, sorry, they're the ones that we're going to have installed automatically. Once we turn the recommends off, you will not get this junk. 
and that's what we're defeating today. So we're going to wait for that build, but while that's building we can start setting up the rest of the project. Because we are copying this across, so we can change this while it builds, because it's already been copied here. And just to confirm that, if we go in here, package this, there's our Sorry, point open, Kate. I've got the one open. Anyway, that's the same one. Now, we're going to change this and we're going to bring in a whole bunch of stuff. First things first, we need to set up our con file. Now this one here, uh, if we wanted to, we could run without the no auto and have that generated, etc. So, there's a few options in here, uh, different from last time. This one here, distribution will by default select bullseye, uh, but I'm specifying it just so you can see the usage of it. As a Debian user, should recognize the extra archive areas. Normally we'll just get main, we won't contribute in non free. This time we're only focusing for 64. Uh, we'll go slightly back to the 686, only the newer version, so. Now, this line here is the one that's going to make a fair bit of the difference in what we're doing today. That comes back to doing the depends and recommends. So these will be included, these are no longer included, which, you know, that's the standard install that you get. We're going to shave off a lot of space. Uh, let's kill that off for now, but you know how to use that. And also, sorry, you can reverse that by doing R depends and see what uh, uses this instead. Now that's getting close. So let's keep going here. We want to make sure that our APT is secure. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I technically believe that means it uses HTTPS and will require uh, packages to be signed. Indices, if I'm not mistaken, that's the indexing, uh, index collection of packages. So it helps generate the indexes effectively what your sudo apt update does. If you have that set to false, once you install your distro, you will have to run a sudo apt update before you can do anything around apt. Backports, you should know what that is by now. Same with security, updates, and the source, if from memory serves me correctly, will generate the source of our build slash tar. Um, which is generally good practice and you should have that available when you build your own distro for other people to have access to. And last three, we want to include the firmware in the binary, e.g. the ISO, uh, ISO, and also the CH root, which is the live system or what we install. Uh, the firmware will include, you know, drivers, etc. And we want to enable the option for memtest when it's available. Okay, that's our config. I know there's a lot to take in there. You can start simpler, um, but I'm just trying to speed things up and you know, bring it up from the last version. So remember, go back to video one, part one, if you're not sure. Okay, and you'll see we get that synced across so that will become available later into there which we don't have okay next part we need to do is probably add in the extra archives now this is due to obviously we need access to the uh, repo lists so there'll be two that we're adding one for the binary and one for the uh, CH root. Uh, pretty sure it's 
right. Same values. Standard um, APT list. Okay, let's just bring it over a little bit. Now, that build's done, so we can test that. Uh, just quickly, so you can see him here. Also, you'll want to know what this code is in a minute. So we're going to start with test ISO. Test ISO only does the ISO, so it loads it to CD-ROM, along with their options. Oops, let's not do that. And that will allow us to boot. This here will wait half a second, find the window and resize it. You don't necessarily need those two, but uh, for the sake of what I'm doing, it makes it quicker and easier, so you never resize. Now that task dash KDE dash uh, desktop will install SDDM as well. But otherwise, here is your somewhat bloated KDE Plasma desktop. So in our graphics, we've got all that. Internet's got all that. You know, let's just say there's some stuff in there. Things we probably don't want, but that's up to you. Uh, not much else I'm really going to show you. Let's just kill that. While we're here, actually, no, we won't because we can't install it, so we won't even worry about the hard drive. So that build's done. Now let's continue our modifications. We've added the archives, we've updated our configuration. Now it's time to do the uh, package list correctly. I've got four of them this time, already labeled, so I'm just gonna copy and paste them as we shoot. Now this is the what I'll call the base distro stuff for now. Got our SDDM, which is Simple Desktop Display Manager, KD Plasma related items, Dolphin File Manager, Console, K, Bash Completion, and Test. These are the setup locales and APT. That's that one. Uh, next one will be just a bit of basic hardware stuff. Nothing over the top, but you know, a few things to give you hints at, uh, and probably enough to get started on a fairly modern computer that's got the right hardware. Following that, we're going to add just an example for applications. I want to keep it light for now. I'm sure you can use your imagination. And last one, for the sake of support. I probably really need to verify these packages 100% as to which ones are being used, but virtualization, particularly for while we're using in the VM, uh, things like that. So each of these are separated by a space. Where the space is is where it's a new package. Uh, each of these you can also check through Debian packages, etc. I'll let you review those in your own time. But let's just say they're done. And we'll get rid of that space. Things like that. Okay. Now we're also going to modify the live list slightly. This is what's available during the live boot only. When you install it, it won't be available. The description will say in the um, big note we're enabling Calamari setting Debian, which will simply give us access to the Calamari's installer. So from this point, you'll be able to install, well, sorry, with this one package, you can install to a hard drive. 
I think that should actually cover the majority of the ones except for the skeleton, which we'll do shortly. So, before we build, let's look at the size of our RSO, 1.7. Uh, we are going to have a bit of bloat in there still because in our config we are going to be including a few extra items, like all our non-free and all that. So let's just say we're exchanging some space for some space. Perform another build now. Just pseudo make, does the clean, does the copying across, does everything. Well, as a template example. So basically, let's look at those folders again while we're just waiting for the build. Uh, so the config folder, APT, you will add in there your preferences and your sources lists as well, similar to the archives, but a bit more related to obviously APT itself directly, configuration. Freeloaders, uh, if we want to, we would put in Grub, ISO Linux, Sys Linux, those sort of ones. DB installer, if we wanted to enable that in here, we would then configure the overlay for that. Hooks, now there will be some generated in here. We are going to cover those in another time though. So in the meantime though, let's, you know. Ah, uh, they're symlinked, okay. No, ignore that for a sec then, because they're just symlinks. Um, but they are on your system ready, you can find them in the user share doc, uh, live build I think it is folder, and we'll cover them in another um, video. Basically, they run at various stages of the build, and allow you to execute bash scripts, so inside of your CMA tree. More customization for building, so for example I'll install an app, customize it through a hook if I can't do it through an overlay. Includes. Now with the CH root you can only use one of these two folders. So we will be using the after folder. Oh, sorry, after packages. And include the store and source, binary, bootstrap. We'll cover those as we use them. Packages, you can drop a deb file in there directly if I'm not mistaken and install it. Same with binary and ch root. Uh, we will be using packages this for now. I try to limit it. Preseed is for the Debian installer, and root file system, if I'm not mistaken, is for the obviously the actual root file system of the build. But we're pretty much done with everything we want to do in here. Uh, the last thing we're going to do, which we can probably do while we're waiting, is show a very simple example of customizing the user, or default users, generally known as the skeleton. So inside of the config, we would create a, da -da -da, sorry, after packages, a new folder, and now this is a copy of your root file. Uh, so etc, user, home, all those sort of folders. But don't do home unless you're uh, targeting a user you know exists. You should be doing that through the hooks and those sort of methods. Again, things in the future. Right, at this point, we'll create, so let's just say, yeah, the bash aliases one. And here's a random example. This is a common one, so this will apply less to your manual, which just makes it quicker and easier to go through. Don't necessarily need it, just means when you run man. 
a very simple example that we're going to use to test that it's working, which is when you do double dot, it will take you back a directory instance cd space double dot. And it's an example of applying color automatically to a ls. Now the install time I believe is under five minutes. It's probably going to be about three to four minutes maybe. Uh, so we pretty much we'll rebuild it after that and then confirm and then install it. This will just be a boot test as usual to make sure the install is available. So regarding these packages, I effectively um, myself have just gone through over time and you know, determined what packages should be done. I looked them all individually, check the recommends and depends of, uh, you know, like for example, starting at the task KDE desktop. We're probably way down from the packages. Everything here is required at all, but uh, I'd rather give you at least somewhat a good base template. But we don't have a hard drive available, so you know, no partitions, it will not let you continue. Uh, at one point in a video, we'll cover customizing this and also rebranding, but that's not today. There's our Chromium. Now, one thing I'll just quickly point out here, we'll have to do it later anyway. When you first run Chromium or use uh, certain parts of your keychain, you will activate this. Uh, this is not set up by default in KDE Plasma. I'm not going to cover it. Simply use the Blowfish and use the same password as your user or if you wanted to auto access it. But confirm the internet works. Done. Yeah. Now we've got a bash alias, so we're just going to rebuild it one more time and install. Otherwise, that's pretty much the process now. Just go in, change your package list if you want, rebuild, test. Add what you need to to your file system, rebuild, test. And then what you need to come in here and apply it. Remember, everything in the manual for live build will apply to this folder structure. So be pretty easy to match it one to one. Now as to why also I have this folder here instead of having something like a, uh, a build folder inside of the parts folder. The thing is this folder here ends up huge with a lot of files. Uh, not Actually it's not going to calculate because it's sim linked. Long story short that could grow to be say 15 gigabytes give or take case your CA true uh, you know all the other generations that have gone on there the problem with that is the indexing of your files uh, most IDEs will find that to be a pain in the ass to index these two here now the two IDEs I use they have the ability to exclude folders but they still try to index it every so often and it just kills it for a while so by doing this method here you're not gonna have to worry about that you know our file count is tiny that's all the ID has got to worry about uh, and not that otherwise if in doubt you know just go something like this here
if you're not using um, something that's going to worry about the indexing. Quick note with make files while we're waiting. The commands here wrapped with the smooth brackets. That is so when we CD into that folder, that command will actually run inside of that folder. If we were to write this command as this here, what would happen is it will CD into that folder. And as soon as we go here, it will be back in the folder we started on. One way around that would be to do something like this here, which will continue that command in that context. Not sure that's the right way for that one, but long story short, uh, wrapping it with the smooths. That will keep the same context, same working directory. Pretty much everything covered in this video now. Um, the next part will just be testing the installer. I'm expecting that to work, obviously. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll debug it as we go. Now, I have created the repo, I've tested this, but you know, when you try to run something live, gremlins may appear. As for the next few things that may be covered, uh, that would be obviously debranding or rebranding the distro in general. That's slightly crosses over with theming as well, because at the end of the day, you obviously don't want to just have a copy theme with a rename. So that would be Katie's Plasma, uh, working with K screen, those sort of things. That's probably one of the biggest ones. Um, also just how you, your system works, like you may change your um, partitioning, your user folders, you may choose to use MHP or systemd. So many things that could also offend many Linux users as well. That's the one thing I'm also hating these days when I see online about Linux. So many users are arguing about distros. And I'm just thinking, well, every Windows user just goes where you use Windows. Um, you know, I, I really don't care what distro you use. Just, you know, remember that at the end of the day, unless it's based differently, they're all pretty much, you know, similar at the core. I'm not trying to be technical or go into techniques. I just, yeah, this Linux, it's not made to be hard. And obviously with your make file, you can, uh, Do something like that with, and you can just run, you know, make do it. Remember, Google is your best friend. And when Googling, always use quotes around certain keywords. Although Google has failed at that these days. So, you know, do test distro this time, so we have access to the hard drive. Skeleton should be applied already, so if I'm not mistaken, I'll probably just open console and quickly test that before we install it. Nope. Well, let's find out when we install. So that's not applied to the live user. Son of a... 
one of my keys every now and then re uh, repeats. You do have the login screen and log out. We can test that by manually logging out. Um, you've seen it before on many videos, so not worried about that. We just auto log in so it's quicker. Obviously, theming Calamari's installer would be another part of the video, probably one in itself. There's a lot of modules for it. I find the package chooser to be a pain. So as you'll see a lot of distros, I believe they don't really use it unless it's one or the other. But again, it really comes down to what people actually want, I guess. At the moment, kind of flying blind with no comments. So you know, I just figured I'll go sequentially and what think it might be useful pe for people. At this point you've got a uh, more or less a minimal build that you can install yourself. Should support uh, all the hardware you need. You can obviously you know find the drivers or uh, adjust the packages as you need. You've got enough hints now to do that. The next part would be yeah theming, debranding, rebranding and basically ensuring it's compatible across as much as possible it is based on stable still not sure if i would go into the testing unstable experimental or apt pinning in this series directly but And you can obviously browse the web while you're waiting as well for the uh, you know Linux to install. That's one thing I always loved about Linux, even 15 years ago when I used to install like the browser the web. Uh, you know, back then it would take longer to install, so browsing the web while I was installing was actually more beneficial. These days, on your hard drive, it will fly even quicker than what this one is. test available. I don't know how that will go on a virtual machine so I'm not going to bother trying it. There's your uh, recovery mode, your kernel. If you have multiple kernels that's how you access it. Maybe when I do the uh, rebranding, debranding of both I'll merge it into the Angular OS at that point. So here's our installed one. We have our removable, but we have a hard drive. Now it was a 32 gigabyte, but the reason I did that is the swap drive by default is going to be the size of your memory. So my memory I've allocated to this is 16 gig, therefore it's going to use half the hard drive straight away for swap. Otherwise, that's done. We go console, we should have our alias, if I did that right. Nope. Well, let's have a look at that in a second. Um, do -do -do. So we didn't get our skeleton. Ah, can you spot the problem? I can. We'll build it. We won't worry about reinstalling it because I should be able to test it without installing. In the meantime, let's rename that file just to show how it should work. Uh, Now 
there you go. So, uh, I won't actually worry about rebuilding. Just know that that was the case of me having a space in the front of it. Uh, one quick final note, just so you don't hate me for it. If you do a clean, that will remove your ISO. After all, it's going to wipe that folder, uh, except for the hard drive memory. Let me just confirm, because the LB clean will do the ISO. Yep. So your hard drive will stay, but your ISO will be gone. Uh, in that case, just copy it out, you know, all that sort of thing. Otherwise, I'm going to end that here. Uh, it's been 40 odd minutes. Hopefully that, you know, adds a little bit to your arsenal and, you know, let Google guide you for some more. Otherwise, we'll see if there's a VR3 coming sometime. Catch us next time.